I love color, mixing it, messing around with it. Um, and also like, I felt like I could do things with paint that I just couldn't do with drawing. Um, I wanted to create worlds and the worlds had to have color. And they had to have like feeling in them. And I think paint is the best medium for me anyway that gets that across. Well, I would say that the subject tends to find me. So it's the thing that I'm most interested in at the time. Like when you're making the work, you're not necessarily conscious of that or what it is that you're doing. So for example, I would have done, you know, I've done commissions and stuff and there it's a kind of your, your parameters are set and you know what you're doing, why you're doing it. But then when you go to make like what I would call like my personal body work maybe, I generally find it just happens. And what happens is you're kind of, something is going on in your life and you're not able to process that in any other way. So it could be, it could be like really happy. It could be love. It could be kind of on the other end of that. It could be anger, upset. But the paintings are like a way of processing that. I made a painting last year called Restroom, which is of like um, a bathroom and it's got a mirror in it, except I'm not in the mirror, even though I should be because I painted it and it's quite large. And it's really, I was really, really angry at the time I painted it. And it was really, I think, a reflection back at me to kind of like take a look at yourself, like, because maybe you're the problem, you know? So that they always reflect something of me, but also they can be universal because I think they kind of hopefully everyone can see something of themselves in them maybe or feel something from them. So for this project, I got to work with Good Shepherd Cork. They work with people who have experienced homelessness or are experiencing homelessness and they provide emergency accommodation for women and for families. Genuinely, like I was terrified going into it, I think until I was settled down by Ty, I suppose. But it was like, who am I to tell these stories? But I think the process worked out really well in that because I got to basically spend a lot of time with the women. The second time we met up, we went, we did painting actually, we were in the Luxembourg, we did painting. And so it was really, we left that one really open where like I provided um, no real kind of, this is what I want from you now, come on, we'll do this. It was more like, let's just paint and relax and chill out together, have tea, talk, really just really informal. And while like people were painting then, you know, we could talk about different things and, and really hopefully enjoy it as well. And it was a little bit meditative as well, I think. So then the third time we met, we went for walks and we went for a walk around UCC. And that was great because, you know, it really is true that when you're walking and talking, it's so informal and relaxed that you could really get to know people better, like one-on-one -on -one maybe more so. So I would, you'd fall into step with someone and then they tell you something that you didn't expect to hear. Or, but also we had a lot of fun. I think that's really important to say. So we repeated that on the fourth session then. So we went and we did another walk, except this time we went up around Cork City. And I got quite close with one of the women, sort of particularly in the group. And she is from the north of Cork and was able to tell me everything, all of the folk stories that I would never know. And also where she lived, where she worked, where her mom worked, you know, it was quite amazing. And yeah, then again, you go back, you have a cup of tea. And that was the session where I noticed that people were really opening up. Like I, I, I think that when we sat down after that walk, a lot of the, the stories, you know, that people have gone through really came out. And you know, it's, it's, it can be difficult, but it was also like such a privilege to be in a position where people trust you and that they're trusting you with these really personal and sometimes traumatic stories. But, you know, I felt so important to do that. And um, I think we were all in it together in a way, which was great. And I feel like the staff who work with Good Shepherd as well were just brilliant. And it felt like brilliant that they were there as well. Then I went to the studio and I had the job of with all these stories in my head and all of the imagery that I'd taken myself and that they'd given me and try and edit all that into some paintings. And so I did about 10 <laughs> that were just straight away in the bin. Just not good, didn't have any feeling, didn't really show what I think they deserve, the stories that they deserve to be, to be told. And I feel like as well, I kind of needed to figure out how to make them you know, this thing of like emotional realism where there's like some kind of a light coming in or, you know, something that makes you feel something in the work so that you don't just walk by them. I want people to stop and take a minute to look. So then I 
eventually came upon Family Hub first, which just came out of me one day in the studio. And it's a painting that I had been looking at a lot of John Singer Sargent interiors, and I had been looking at um, a kind of contemporary artist, Jenna Gribben, some of her interiors. And the light in those two paintings, if one by each, that the light was just wonderful in. And I wanted to replicate that somehow. So I had the um, image of the window and the buggies. That's a real place. That's Red Cliff House, which is it's literally the family hub where the, where the um, families would stay. And so this image of the prams lined up on the window, that's actually real. And so I was really lucky in that. I have been given that image. I didn't take it myself. One of the women who works there had given it to me. And so I used that as the basis and then I brought in that light to make it stand out and to make it important. And so that like, you can really, like, there's an importance I think with that light because you can't just walk by and I want people to really look and to see and to think about it. So Marie's room is the darker one here. So I got to know Mary quite well and she was wonderful and brought me around Adele House and brought me into her bedroom in Adele House and was just so generous, was like, here, just take a picture, you can paint it, I don't mind, you know, really lovely person. And while we were there, she had referenced an artwork that she really liked, which was a dark kind of a print of trees at night. Um, so she was someone who said that she had experienced homelessness and when she wasn't in Adele House, she had liked the nighttime sleeping outside because no one was judging you and it was okay. No one was really looking at you. You didn't feel like people were, you know, around not happy that you were there or anything. And she loved looking up at the trees at night. So I wanted to bring that kind of nighttime into the work. So the last painting, Room for Making Change, um, that was one of the women who works with, um, it works in Good Shepherd Cork. She's like um, the education officer and she's just a wonderful person and her office is this space where anyone can go into any time in the Dell house and she allows them to just you know draw paint do a jigsaw whatever it is she allows them the space to kind of relax while also talking through things you know whatever she's just a brilliant person and I think the, all the people who work there are so there was something in that I think hope was the thing that I thought of most when I thought of that room. So we had the opening then, or the unveiling of the paintings in, here in the Glucksman, right here in this space in March 2023. And it was an absolutely, like, I don't know how to describe it. It was a really emotional, but joyous and brilliant day. So like, it was the first time that the women were seeing the paintings in real life. I think they'd seen images of them because they might have asked for them. <laughs> but it was the first time that they were seeing them in real life. and to see how they reacted because these are their paintings and these are their stories. So it was really, I was a little bit worried and terrified, but when I saw how they reacted, it just felt like, I suppose it felt like I'd done the job and hopefully done justice because it was like, we were all very emotional. It was, it, it's a big thing, I think, to sort of take on such a stories like that and then hopefully to do them justice. Um, and I think that was, kind of achieved really and I think that that day was just it was wonderful we had music here we had coffee and tea and cake and it was a real celebration like I don't want people to walk past I do want you to look and to imagine and to feel like what that will be like to be there so I don't paint people into my paintings for a very specific reason and that is that I want you to be able to walk into the painting and feel like what it would be like to be in that space on your own so when you put people in a painting that kind of creates a barrier that you may see oh that's occupied I can't go in there well actually in these works I really want you to go in and I want you to explore and to understand it